Hello everybody, welcome to I Command, this is TV Boy, and we've got your second game for round one of our April month-long tournament. This is a free tournament series where the winner will be getting a set of custom dice, so first place. But I've got prizes coming down for everybody who participates. I just got them in, actually, the tokens yesterday, and they're going to be sent out. And we've got prizes for top four as well, and we're going to be doing this every month through May and June, so make sure you sign up for the May one. I'll be putting out a registration link for that very soon. Join our Discord if you want to get plugged into the online community and play online. But otherwise, let's get into the game here. We've got another awesome matchup. This one's actually going to be really fun. I picked this one very specifically because we've got three massive figures in this game, uh, including an assault tank, or an, excuse me, a repulsor tank, and two rancors. Some big boys in this one. And uh, not going to be the only player we're seeing playing two Rancors in this tournament, strangely enough. It's, it's a pretty popular list. But let's talk about the players, and then we'll talk about the mission. Um, although I guess let's talk about the mission first, since you guys probably already saw it, round one. The other game from round one, we are playing on the Triple Cross mission. This is the one with the gangsters that are worth two VPs each. They have six health, two blocks for defense, and they respawn once each round. And it starts off with three of them on the map. And up on the top left in the red deployment zone, starting off with initiative, we've got Derek, who is playing Imperials. And Derek has the SC2M Repulsor tank, as you can see on your screen zoomed in there. Uh, in ISCP, I believe it is just one cheaper. I don't. I think maybe there was one other small change, but I can't remember what it is. But it is one point cheaper. In ISCP, he's also got the Imperial retrofitting, which I should have pulled up first, but I'll grab it right here. Imperial, there it is. Which is basically Beast Tamer for. Uh, massive vehicles and Imperial Assault, but it excludes the ATDP. Uh, this came out, I believe, in Season 2, way back when. Uh, and it's still really good. So, Imperial Retrofitting. Uh, for him, he's also got two groups of Elite Sentry Droids, Zillow Technique, Extra Armor, and he's got a, a Elite Jet Troopers uh, in reserve with Imper excuse me, with Lion Ambush. And then we've got Extra Armor, Zillow Technique, Smuggling Compartment, and Rule by Fear. No officers in this list, I'll point out. Just all business and some skirmish upgrades. And he is playing against, uh, uh, I'm not going to say a new player, because I've seen him around for a while now, but uh, Bacon Second is his username. I am going to be referring to him henceforth as Bacon. Uh, I've actually played against him, and I remember he gave me quite a challenge when I played him. So, uh, uh, Bacon is a pretty good skirmish player from what I've seen. Uh, but I believe he is a rookie, as this is his first year playing in our organized play, as far as I can remember. So, I'm going to say that Bacon's a rookie, but not no slouch, for sure, in skirmish. So, I think we're going to see a very good game here. As everybody knows, Derek is on the steering committee. He's been playing in competitive Imperial Assault for quite a few years now. Uh, quite a while. So we're going to see some good play. Let's, hopefully. <laughs> it did. I did see the final score, in our, and it did look pretty close. So I have not seen the game yet, though. All right, so the timer is set. Both players have drawn their cards. It looks like Derek is going to discard Rapid Recalibration for Rule by Fear. So he drew two cards in addition to his three starting cards and then had to discard one. So discarded Rapid Recalibration. And Derek has the initiative, but I believe he is way low on points. I didn't even talk about Bacon's list. Bacon is playing two Rancors. Uh, let's see if I can pull this guy up. Two Rancors um, updated in... These actually had two updates. I believe they were recosted in Season 1 or 2. And this nobody played them, so we, re we overhauled them in Season 7. Uh, to have the special voracious ability that lets him reactivate by sacrificing another figure within two spaces. Uh, he's also got the... what is that? What is that card? I think it's Feeding Frenzy. He's got Feeding Frenzy attachment on one of them. He's also got Beast Tamer, which as we probably know is the one point skirmish upgrade that lets a friendly um, creature perform a free move by exhausting the Beast Tamer. And then he's got three regular Jawas to feed to the Rancors. And then the support package is Dr. Afra, Bib Fortuna, and Jabba the Hutt. 
and he's also got Unshakable in there to get rid of harmful conditions. This is a list that was used a lot in Season 7 competitive play by Herbie. I remember he was playing this list all the time. He was giving people uh, giving people some, some scares with this list. Um, I always thought it was kind of a funny list. But it, it looks really fun and um, apparently really powerful if you can get off the combos with the Jawas and feed them to the Rancors to give them extra activations. So let's see how it goes. This should be an interesting map for sure with all this blocking terrain and the massive figures being able to ignore it. All right, so I'm assuming Derek is passing here as Derek only has... Whoa, Derek only has three activations. He is using the David Gao strategy with Lion Ambush, where if you have three activations plus your Lion Ambush uh, deployment on top of that, you can force your Lion Ambush group to come out at the end of round two after your opponent has activated all of their figures. Okay, this is going to be very interesting to watch. I'm glad I picked this one as our second feature match for the round. Okay, so it looks like Jabba has activated for Bacon. Uh, has focused up one of the Rancors and drawn a card. And then now it looks like Derek's uh, Sentry Droids are going to go for that middle Gangster. And we talked about it in the last video. Uh, if you can get that middle Gangster, it usually means you're going to be ahead on victory points in round one. Since it's very difficult to get the other Gangster near the opponent's deployments on. Now, I have done that, actually. I have gotten all three Gangsters on round one in this map. It was uh, some Ahsoka shenanigans. Uh, and a lot it was a long time ago though but uh, generally you're not going to get the one near your opponent's deployment zone all right here is the attack using the charge shot for plus two accuracy and by the way these are only recosted by minus one point they are 10 points in regular ffg they're minus one the cp is the rebalance we're going to see the pierce two and the plus one so i think we're short it's going to take five damage from that attack but there's another sentry droid coming up to do another charge shot. Very good attack. And that's going to take it out. So Derek going to get the three VPs from that sentry droid and going to move back. I wonder if those sentry droids are too close, but we'll see. Okay, focus Rancor. Just going to take up the entire turn all the way. Ah, I'm going to attack the gangster there with reach. Interesting, Bacon using his focus on this... Um, on this gangster attack rather than saving it for like the tank. Maybe he just wanted to make sure he one-shotted it. So six and then search for plus two damage. Takes out the gangster in one swipe. Alright, and Derek is passing, so uh, Bacon gonna activate Bib Fortuna. Gonna focus the other Rancor that's still in the deployment zone. Okay, Dr. Afro now going to activate. Derek's still passing. Derek can pass until Bacon's down to just two activations. So Afro moving all the way to the far left doorway. We see Afro doing that a lot lately in this map. We've got a Jawa. Going to go to the bottom middle doorway. Not going to open it, though. You can see he doesn't have enough movement points. And the other Jawa going to move just inside the wall, but by the overpass. And now we see that Bacon's down to just a Rancor and a Jawa, so Derek's going to have to activate his other group of Decepticons, his Sentry Droids. Going to go for the other Gangster near his deployment zone. And that's going to be... He does have a reroll with Targeting Computer, 1, 2, 3, 4, Pierce, 2, 5... He could re-roll, might as well, but actually I think maybe he doesn't get much better than that. So it's going to do the 5 damage. He does have the other sentry droid which can come down and attack, and he is now also on his turn. That's going to take out the, the gangster and going to put Derek at 6 VPs to Bacon's 3. So Derek has taken the lead now. And interesting, the Rancor are going to straddle that overpass next to the Jawa on the bottom middle door. So a conservative line by Bacon here, I would say, not pushing his Rancors up further, but probably difficult to do so with that tank threatening. The, the thing about the Repulsor tank in IACP is it's very threatening with um, the retrofitting, allowing it to get a free move action and then use its other two actions to use Focus Fire. I remember it actually, Jake won 
Adepticon 2021 with that strategy, with two jets. Not this strategy specifically, but with the assault tank and two jet troopers. <coughs> okay. So, Bacon should have actually had last act here, so he's actually saving his last activation for the Jawa. So that was interesting. So the Jawa moved up next to the Rancor. Alright, both players drawing cards. No spies in this matchup. I just put a video out about spies in Skirmish and IACP. But not going to have to deal with that here. But this is the round we're going to see uh, the Jet Troopers come out at the end of the round if Derek does this correctly. Uh, but we're going to see the Gangsters are going to redeploy. We're going to go to the number 4 spot down on the left side of the map by the car which means it is going to do 2 damage to this droid. I think it actually does 2 damage to both, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yeah, he's going to take 2 damage on both of these sentry droids because, unfortunately, the mission is ruled by distance, not by line of sight. So even though he doesn't, the, the gangster doesn't have line of sight to this guy, right? Oh, no, wait, is it? And determine the close... Oh, never mind. Figure in line of sight. Okay, so no, only this um, sentry droid will be taking damage then. Because it does check for line of sight from the gangster. Okay, and then I think... Who moves it? I always forget. Then each player moves one different... Yeah, three spaces. So whoever has initiative right now... So Derek gets to move the gangster. He's going to move it towards his own figures. And then the initiative token is going to pass over to Bacon for round two. Um, and this is exactly what Derek wants. I wonder, is he running 39 points? Because I know David used to run 39 points to ensure that he started with initiative. So you can make it work the way you want it. 10 plus 18 is 28. Uh, 30. 38. No, he's running 40. So he's, he's risking that he might give the opponent initiative, which is what he doesn't want for this list. He wants to have initiative round 1 so that he is going to get initiative in round 3 and have the last activation in round 2. But it's going to work out. Derek did get the initiative that he wanted. So Jabba going to activate for Bacon here. Going to draw a card and focus uh, the Rancor. So both Rancors are now focused. Derek's going to pass. Jabba's going to activate. Going to open the middle door and move into the middle room. Okay, Derek going to pass again. Afro going to open the door and move up into the corner. Derek going to pass. Jawa going to activate, and it looks like it's hold... Oh, the red Jawa is going to open the door. No, it's just going to move next to the door. Uh, okay, Rancor activating. Did not use Beast Tamer yet. Going to move up against the far left door. Interesting. Okay, Bib going to focus Jawa. Interesting. Okay. Bib Fortuna focusing up Jabba. Derek passes. Okay, no, now it's down to... Now it's down to Rancor, Afra, and another Jawa. And I believe the reason that he's leaving the Jawa up is because the way it works is... At the start of another figure's activation, you may defeat a friendly non-companion figure within two spaces to recover two damage. But another figure's activation... So you have to, you can't do it on the Rancor's activation. So he has to do Rancor and then Jawa. Yeah, that's kind of tricky. Okay, the sentry droids are going to go for the gangster here. Two blocks, five damage, very consistent. Dealing five damage to those two blocks. Takes out the gangster. And they are both moving back towards the deployment zone behind the tank. Alright. Uh, Afra going to activate. She did excavate the rapid recalibration, but it's not useful. It's not usable by anything in Bacon's list. Alright, and now we've got... Uh, so you activated Afra. So now just down to ja Jabba... Or not Jabba. The Rancor and the Jawa. Uh, so the sentry droid's gonna come up and take some shots at the Rancor, who rolls double black. And I believe the Rancor only gets the reroll on offense. It used to have it on defense during playtesting, 
but that we realized that was a little too strong to have that reroll like like uh like Darth Vader but for nine points instead of thirteen. Okay, so three damage into the Rancor. And is it the second sentry going? Okay, no. Oh, what is this? Oh, the century, second sentry is gonna play armored armed escort. Uh, start of activation during your activation during the shot. Other friendly figures in two spaces. You gain plus one evade. So turning his sentry droid into a poor man C3PO, if you will, and but not gonna attack the rancor. Just gonna hang back by the tank. <coughs> and Bacon's second to last activation is gonna be the Jawa. And now he can trigger the Rancor on the tank's activation to ready the Rancor? No, how does that work? I guess he can do it uh, at line ambush, right? Yeah. Alright, I did. there was a card play, but I didn't see it. Oh, Price of Glory, so that tank is activating, gonna play Price of Glory. And then also gets the free two movement points. So able to move six spaces here without taking an action. And it didn't overlap anything, so it does get to keep moving after it makes this attack. It's going to use focus fire here. So two attacks targeting the Rancor. And it... Oh, it doesn't have targeting computer there. Ooh, but the Rancor low rolls a bit. <clears throat> Four, five, six, seven. So we're looking at five damage into this Rancor. Did it not make accuracy? No, it did. There we go. Five damage. Uh, only one attack, though. I think because... One, two, three, four, five, six. Hmm. Not sure why we didn't see the second attack from Focus Fire there, but we do see the Rancor now activating and gonna play Urgency. And I believe this is the Rancor with Feeding Frenzy on it. Rancor gonna use Beast Tamer. Oh, just, cause you, just gonna use Beast Tamer. Okay, gonna move up and perform an attack targeting the tank. Gonna get to use oh this one so he attacked the one that had not had already activated interesting okay gonna spend a token here spend a block token on the tank and the tank gets plus one evade from armed escort and also has defensible to add a block or an evade of its choice uh, let's see what's the black die oh the triple black triple block uh, the rancor can re-roll Probably might want to do that with the... Oh, I do have... Oh, here we go. I have the chat, text chat. Just a single shot. Interesting. So I think Derek didn't want to use focus fire and opted to use the second action for a move so he could move back out of... maybe out of range. I'm not sure. Uh, but... Let's see if... Yeah, he is going to take a strain... Bacon's going to take a strain to re-roll the red with the trained ability. Discarding planning from the top of the deck. Much better. Well, at least one damage better. Unfortunately, he doesn't have any targets for cleave, so only one surge is going to be of use to him. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven... Oh, but the, all the surge cancels, though. Actually, that second surge is... That third surge is actually really good. Because the tank cannot stop the surge for plus two. So yeah, Derek can add a block. He could have added an evade there. If Bacon only had two surges, he would have added an evade and stopped the surge for plus two. So actually, that was really good. Um, so what are we looking at? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, minus five. So two damage to the tank. And now the jet troopers get to deploy. 
but this strategy, the Rancor, interestingly enough, kind of counters Derek's strategy. The idea is to have the de Jet Troopers deploy and activate uh, without any counter activations from Bacon. But the Rancor now gets to use its Voracious ability at the start of the Jet Troopers activation so it can re ready itself by eating one of these Jawas. So let's see if that's what Bacon does. Yes, I will sack the Jawa to ready the Rancor. So Derek gets two VPs from that. But the Jets are now going to go after Jabba. Oh, we're going to play Overrun with the Jet Trooper. Luckily, uh, Jabba is not super important in this game because there's only five figures. Well, actually seven on Derek's side. But still, losing Jabba is not always great. Oh, we're going to play Concentrated Fire as well. Attack against Jabba. Ouch. That is a lot. Six, seven, nine. I think that's eight damage. And then overrun for the kill. Wow. Ouch. Okay. And then, unfortunately, the other Jet Trooper is not in a great spot from that stun. Oh, it does two damage to Bib as well with the overrun card. I'm gonna clear the stun and then has to just do a regular attack on Bib. Yeah, Derek says I didn't attack. I didn't affect. Didn't expect to one-shot Jabba there. Okay, shoot Bib without the flyby for two damage. One short. Bib has five health. And now Bacon gets to activate his Rancor. Oh, getting to play Pummel. Very nice. Very nice. And I think this is the one that has Feeding Frenzy, so it will be able to exhaust Feeding Frenzy for plus one damage here. Okay, attacking the tank. The tank spends a block token. Uh, Derek asking for a reroll. Probably not. Oh, going to discard a card for Bib uh, for his illicit arms ability to add plus one damage. So what are we looking at here? One, two. So that extra evade is coming from the armed escort, by the way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Minus two, probably minus three. So it'll be doing four damage. Uh, Derek is. Oh, he discarded <coughs> Savage Vigor for Bib. Uh, interesting. Eric, so Derek adding a block with defensible going to take. Four. Oh, there we go. There's the Feeding Frenzy being exhausted. So that is going to add one more damage. Uh, I think Derek's not counting the Bib and Feeding Frenzy. Yeah, there we go. So five damage to the tank. And now the second attack from Pummel. Just needs to do five damage here. No more block tokens. He does have Zillow Technique, though. Plus one damage. Feeding Frenzy is an exhaust. No reroll. Gonna use Bib here, right? Because seven minus three is four. Yeah, so he has to discard to Bib to counter Zillow Technique. Discarding Urgency. Oh, he has Defensible and Zillow Technique. Ooh. So Derek's still going to survive that. Going to take four damage. But yeah, he, he did force the Zillow discard there by discarding with, with Bib Fortuna. And Derek had to discard Fuel Upgrade, which would have been pretty good with the Jets and the Tank. So the tank manages to just barely hang on with one health left here against the Rancor Onslaught. Okay, gonna roll for gangsters here. End of round. The three. Ooh, right on the Rancor. And now Derek's gonna be getting initiative here. But it looks like Bacon's got the take. Derek has the negation, though. Derek's saying, I think I misplayed discarding my fuel upgrade. Interesting. 
I want to play it now, but I really should have used it last round. Ah, interesting. That's tough to have to predict that you would need fuel upgrade when you don't even have, you only have one vehicle on the table. Uh, oh, Bacon going to excavate on Pummel with Dr. Afra, so very powerful there. Okay, and now Derek's going to exhaust, activate the tank. Going to get the free movement from retrofitting. And now going to focus fire into the Rancor. Two attacks. Ooh, really see why you like to have the targeting computer on the tank. The one point attachment. Um, one, two. So one damage to the Rancor. Yeah, that's rough. It's looking not good for Derek here. Oh, nice. He's going to deplete the retrofitting so he gets a focus on this second attack. I always forget about that ability. Yeah, you can definitely deplete a card that's exhausted. Yeah, not a great roll there either. But did get an extra 2 damage from the focus at least. Uh, 2 more damage to that Rancor. The tank gonna move back behind the behind the sentry droids, but of course, small figures do not block line of sight for massive figures. All right. So now Bacon exhaust activating his rancor. I believe the blue rancor. Yep. Gonna move with Beast Tamer. Ready's up the Feeding Frenzy and probably now hoping to get some recovery with that. Interesting. Not going to use Pummel. It looks like he used an action to move. So we're going to attack Sentry Drill 2. Going to take a strain to reroll the red die. Uh, the uh, notorious butthole roll. Gonna use cleave though on B1 and three damage. Oh, he played. Did he play expose weakness here? Ah, the rancor used expose weakness to give his next attack pierce three. So we're gonna see three damage and pier and cleave three. Interesting. And this is going to be the last round due the, to the time limit, so round three. Okay, Derek going to activate the blue sentry droids, and they are going to lay into this Rancor. And Derek, oops, struggling with some bad dice rolls there. Does get the pierce two. Oh, but the Rancor has plus one block, it looks like. So no damage for the sentry droid there. Oh, he's got parting blow. So this Rancor is going to catch the Sentry turn to run away. Really good roll there with the two Surges. Going to be able to do extra damage and either cleave three or recover two. Bacon going to discard negation to Bib to add plus one damage. And then going to cleave and do plus two. So he killed the droid and he did cleave three. And now the Rancor is going to be stunned from that. Okay, now the other sentry droid going to activate the attack. Derek needs some much better dice rolls there. Unfortunately, that is going to be zero damage. Oh, he must he played survival instincts. I missed that as well. So the Rancor. Uh, the reason the Rancor is so tanky right now is because of survival instincts, which gives him plus one damage and plus one evade for the rest of the round when he if he uses it during his activation so one of the really strong parts of the rancor list is survival instincts especially when you can replay it with excavation so derek is just attacking into a brick wall here 
And yeah, the Rancor should be stunned, but he does have Unshakable. Okay, Jawa is the red Jawa moving up. Okay, now we've got the Jet Troopers activating, going to go for Bib Fortuna, who has one health left. <coughs> Bib is definitely dead, so Derek, you know, Derek's having a rough time, but he is up on VPs because that tank has not been killed yet. Second one going to go for the Jawa and takes it out. So Derek now had 22 VPs, Bacon down only at 8, needs to catch up. Dr. Afra going to activate, oh, is he going to sacrifice Dr. Afra? I think Bacon was expecting to sacrifice that Jawa that just got killed. And that might have might have thrown a wrench into his plans here. Okay, Derek is passing. He removed the Bacon removed the stun with Unshakable on the Rancor. Okay, Dr. Afra. How is blue readied? Needs a group to activate first. Alright, uh, let's see. Okay, so the red Rancor activates. Is that what's happening? The red Rancor is activating and then the blue Rancor is eating Afro. I'm not sure if that's what happened. But we've got both Rancors are now readied. And Afra is dead, so Derek went up to 26. Okay, and we've got a sentry droid taking a shot at the blue <coughs> Rancor here. Once again, against the survival instincts. It is going to do zero damage. Second attack on the Rancor. Four pierce two, so two damage. Derek actually got some damage through on that Rancor there. Okay, how is Red? So now Derek asking, how is Red ready? Okay, so Red. Do they not have non sentient? They are trained. So Red, the Red Rancor opened the door, moved out. And now he's going to sac he, he sacrifice Afra to ready the blue Rancor. And now he's sacrificing the red Jawa to ready the red Rancor. With the voracious abilities. But he is just hemorrhaging VPs from doing this. Derek now at 28. Bacon at 8. Okay, going to attack the tank with the... This must be the blue one. He still has Pummel excavated. Uh-oh, did it not kill? Ooh. Because Derek has cards to discard to Zillow, and he's got defensible. He needs to reroll that red. That red is really killing Bacon here. <coughs> Gonna discard um, Apex Predator from the top of the command deck to reroll, and he does get the damage he needs there. And that should kill the tank now. So now Bacon can go up to... 18, and he needs to get the kill. Ah, why is the Rancor moving up now? He's blocking his access with... Why did that Rancor move up? Did he already... He must. He used Beast Tamer already. The other Rancor is too far away. And now he just has to go for the Gangster. And goes to 21. And then end of round. Oh man, that was close. So Derek able to pull back into this tight space here by his deployment zone where the Rancors just couldn't quite get to him. And wasn't Bacon not able to overcome the huge loss of VPs from sacrificing all those figures to the Rancors. A little bit of a VP management there, I think. 
but very close game and you can see how those rankers just kind of stomp through eating your own figures on the way to fuel their rampage against your opponent's figures and very fun to watch and you could see that rancor just would not die that blue rancor was just taking attack after attack and not taking any damage and then with the feeding frenzy it was able to recover what damage it did take but the VP's uh, exchange just did not work out in Bacon's favor there, and Derek was able to survive um, with the clock running out. It makes sense that there are less rounds in this game because there were so many extra activations, if you think about it. Like, right, each Rancor is kind of activating one or two extra t times in a round, so more stuff happening in each round means less total rounds with the timer. But that is how it goes, and... Um, congratulations to Derek for winning round one. Bacon, of course, is still in it. You can still get into the top four with a 2-1-1 record. So I, I'm hoping to see uh, more play from Bacon, and hopefully you guys will join us for the uh, next round and for the tournament in May as well. I want to say a quick thank you to my sponsors, everybody who donates on Patreon. Thank you so much. You guys make this content possible. I have said that if my Patreon ever goes down to less than $5 a month, I am just going to probably close up shop and cancel the channel. So thank you guys for keeping the lights on and keeping the channel open. It's really appreciated, not just by myself, but by everybody in the community who gets to enjoy this content thanks to your contributions. Thanks everybody for watching, and we'll catch you for the next one.